Hello and welcome to the Nitty Kitties channel. I'm Any Art Nettie. Now this is something a bit different today. Today I'm introducing another member of the Nitty Kitty Collective. Of course you may have already been introduced to Toki and Fluffy and of course myself Nettie but this video is about sand casting or how to sand cast. This is the process what the Heaven Emporium uses. So say hello and welcome to Heaven Emporium. Now he makes jewellery, chain mail, chain mail jewellery and casts his own pendants. I shall put the Instagram up in the description below, Facebook and all the links where you can go and have a look at his work. There'll be a show reel at the end. But in this video today, he's going to show you how he goes about two different processes with casting pewter. Now, I don't know much about it, so I'm trying to explain it as best I can. Now, the way that he's showing isn't some standard way or the way you should do it 100%. Some things he does it his own way because he's found he prefers to do it that way. So... I hope that explains everything and I'll get back to you when he starts the casting and how to set up a flask. Now just to mention as well, everything he makes is handmade jewellery. This isn't his hands by the way, it's out of some lovely manicure <laughs> you'll see in a minute. But this is just some footage off a website called Pexels which is free to use and is really really good for just showing lovely bits of that's handmade jewellery there. And he does all that filing and I think himself, fantastic work. Something I can't do myself, but we thought we'd show you something different. So part one is called the top-down method. So you see that black flask there, which I'll just circle. That is in two different sections. So this is how he goes about setting up the flask. Now this, he says, is the most important bit. So you can't do this wrong. So he's just swapped them to the correct way round. And then you see the bottom. That one there has got the pegs there. So you can't really mix them up at all. So he's going to set that top one aside. And he's just working on the bottom one now. You can see that's the opening for the flask there. But we're not going through the opening. We're going through the back. So he's turned that, if you can see, face down. And this sand he's using is called green sand. And it's also called a moulded casting. As the mould, you can see he's breaking up now, that sand, because that's from a previous cast. And you've got to have that without any clumps in. It's got to be as clump free as possible shall we say so don't, no lumps so just spend some time crumbling that up so as you can see it's only a very small surface that he works on so and some people will put it onto the bench or see like the little tray that he's got there and they'll chop it up but this is the method he prefers to do it again we're not saying this is the way you should do it 100%. You do whatever feels right to you and comfortable to you, how you work. So again, he's only got a small space, so he finds this is the way he prefers to do it. And it also, of course, if you were to pour that out, it does create a lot of mess as well. So again, that process of making sure there's no clumps in it, if you do have clumps in it, it won't compact together properly and it might look a bit weird. So it's best, again, as you can see, he's overfilling it there. That's to make sure that the sand is in every corner of the flask and it needs to be really compacted down. Again, there's different ways that other crafted, crafters do this, but this is the way he prefers to do it and it works best for him. So he's now compacting the sand right down and he's using a piece of wood. 
to really compact that down and force it into the flask so, that, so there's no gaps at all. So this is a rolling pin, kind of like tool, which came with a clay kit. So that's the one. So he's going to use a lot of force again to roll and compact the sand down more so. And then you'll see he goes back and forth that way and then turns and does it the other way too. So he, as you can see, it's really compacting that sand down. So he's just explaining there, if you were to leave that, the sand would pu push upwards. So what you need to do is level that off there. Because it obviously if you left it like that, the sand would push up and then it, you might have the potential of getting gaps in it. So I'm going to level that off as much as possible. It might lift up a little bit when he flips it over, but at least he's done that and it's leveled off. You can see there's tiny holes there, but that should not be a problem. So he's going to spin that over, and you can see it's slightly raised up. He's going to level that off using the piece of wood again. not sponsored here at all we've got a talcum powder this is just the brand that he prefers to use it's the only one we could actually find in the shop and he's going to put just a small amount of that talcum powder onto the top of the work and use a small brush just to create an even layer now that is going to make sure that when it's finished and the time comes to separate the two sides that it's going to come apart easier than if, if you didn't do that it wouldn't come apart as easy. So this is a 3D printed pendant and there'll be a video coming up about that in the future. Do comment if you'd like to see that. And he spun it around so that the design is face down into the sand. So if you wanted to do more than one there's room there to do two pendants. He's doing it towards the top because that's going to use less molten pewter. So he's putting a lot of pressure on that if you've seen and it is making sure that it went all the way evenly so that you don't miss any of the design on it. And he's got a thin layer of talc again and then puts the top half of the flask on. It'll only go in one way, you can see the pegs there. And it should fit snugly all the way round, so you don't want any gaps. So make sure to check all the way around before you do anything else. If there's a gap, it may be holes that, that the the sand in the pegs so make sure not to do that as well that might be the reason why there's a gap so he's just making sure there's no clumps in that sand again and he's going to overfill the flask again just like he did before so it's better to overfill rather than underfill and you've got more of a chance of there being no gaps or anything like that
and then he's going to scrape the excess of that sand off and none of that goes to waste as well and I'll explain in a bit once the casting's done what happens and he's leveled that off again with the rolling pin and so off the top comes there and it's all compacted so it won't fall to bits hopefully <laughs> but there we go there's the two halves now he's going to make vents at this stage so when he pours the molten pewter in it's going to obviously there's going to be steam or a gas for and that's got to escape so if you don't do that it's going to create bubbles in your work and that will obviously spoil the piece so he's got a brush here so he's going to use the handle there he's just explaining how he goes from there to the corners four times and then pushes that right down and through you can see that went through to the other side now any bits of excess dust that come off you've got to brush them off but brush it away from the piece of work because otherwise that could get into the cast and it'll spoil it so again he goes from that to the corner and pushes right through and that creates a vent for the gas and the steam to escape from because obviously it's molten hot metal so it's going to create steam and gas so there we go that's where it all escapes from so he's done that four times I'm just going to show you it's gone right through there to the other side so again make sure you get rid of any excess dust there sand and it's just going to get tweezers now I'll apologize in advance because it was the wrong the camera was the wrong way around and me being left-handed I've set up the camera in a left-handed manner so you won't be able to see this but the process what he's doing now is he's getting that 3d printed pendant out and you've got to make sure to do that so it doesn't stretch and it's got to be a exactly the same as that pendant but the imprint in the sand and then again get rid of any excess sand so that's out the way and do it away from in a motion away from the casting area because you don't want to ruin your work at this stage He's making a hole at the back of the pendant there for the molten pewter and that's going to be where the molten pewter is going to pour into the cast. Now this hole needs to be bigger on the opposite side there where you can see it's gone through to make a funnel shape and that's for the metal to be poured into there that's exactly where it's good, going to go and that'll mean if you make a funnel shape that it won't run all, all over the surface and obviously that would mean a, me a neater pour there so he's going to use um, what do you call it an exacto knife there and that will make a conical shape into this side obviously there is probably all the tools that you can use to do that but he's found that this is the best method for him so it's whatever there might be some tool which specifically does that but there he goes using the exacto knife there to make a is it conical shape a funnel shape there again be very careful to brush away any excess sand there so it doesn't fall into where the molten pewter is going to be poured in and obviously make sure that channel is clear and he'll show that bit in a minute now just being very neat and precise there again apologies the way I set up the camera maybe we should have gone top down but I'll try and explain as much as I can what's going on so 
so he's just going to brush away again the excess there we go because obviously that's going to fall into that where the molten pewter goes and you don't want to do that after you've been so careful there so there we go that's where the molten metal is going to fall through So he's just making sure that's a nice clean run through there and then he's going to put that on top back onto the flask there ready for the next step So this is the instrument he's using to heat up the pewter. It was off Amazon and I'll provide any links in the description below. This is the, if you can see, the WML BK 380 watt. It's got an electrical portable solder furnace and he got it with a UK plug. Now it's got four different speed temperatures on it and you can adjust them and the wire to the plug is 130 centimeters long and he's just put a piece of pewter in there one from a failed attempt and one which is a fresh piece so you can see what a fresh piece looks like and the pewter he's using is a english lead free pewter now you can wait for that we'll call it an electric ladle <laughs> instead of the big long name you can wait for that handheld furnace to heat the pewter itself but he prefers there what he's using is a Dremel handheld VersaFlame butane hand torch or just say butane hand torch to speed up the process of course that also saves money on electric so it speeds up the process as well so you're not waiting so long it's not really long but that just speeds it up a little bit and there is another process how to do this and you'll be able to see this a bit closer up in the next in the next bit so other methods crafters use instead of a this is either a steel ladle which isn't an electric one at all and a blowtorch which will only use whatever you use to power the it would be butane obviously for a torch or some people use I guess this is an old fashioned way an old, a saucepan on a hob make sure it's an old one but if you're doing that make sure the pewter is lead free but the good thing about this electric ladle is he finds it keeps it all at the correct temperature whereas if you're just using a blowtorch with no other source of heat as soon as you move the blowtorch away it starts to cool down so this makes for a much easier pour just using the back the handle of the spoon there to take off a film which forms on the top of the molten pewter it's like a dark gray you can see on the end of the spoon there again other tools are there but that's what he finds he wants to use 
Now try not to be too hesitant there, you've got to do one smooth pour. He's going to pour the molten pewter into the work. There, you can see that. Then it gets turned off and he's going to put that down on a safe surface so that that ladle can cool down. Sometimes smoke will come out the vents but because we were filming it, it didn't, it can be quite cool to see, but not every time. So we're just going to let that cool now and solidify. So you can see there's a little hole in the top there, we're not sure why that does that but I'm sure there's somewhere we'll find out why it does that. So he's going to lift the top off there of the flask and turn it so you can see the casting is facing up and you may be able to see there that some molten metal has gone into the vents but that can be easily removed and neatened when you finish the piece of jewellery so it's no problem at all. So if you can see where the sand has gone black on that as well, that's burnt sand and that will be because the hot molten metal has touched the sand. Now unfortunately that sand cannot be used again, the stuff that's turned black. But the rest of it can be re reused again and again for other castings, obviously until it burns. You can see it black there, so that needs to be removed And that from the spout. You see? So he's just removing that black sand there to discard it, get rid of it. And then the rest of it, he'll pop into that plastic with plastic box and it can be reused again and again. And there's the finished piece there and you can see the bit at the back where the metal was poured in, the funnel shape, that can be easily removed and you can saw that off and then finish it off. And he's just going to brush away there any of the burnt sand. And there we go. So part two here and this is the through the funnel so the top of the flask. It's pretty much the same procedure as the first method up to a certain point. So again he's just gonna make sure there's no clumps in that sand and then fill the flask again exactly the same process.
This is a ring he's made using a 3D printer. And this is what he's going to cast with this. Now he's going to position it at the top. Again, that will use less metal if you were to put it right at the bottom. So, you can obviously pour two if you want to. But you've got to keep in mind where the metal, molten metal's pouring through, that's where it's going to hit the ring. So it's probably best to put it at the back of it, rather than at the front where probably a design is going to be. So he's just going to position that where the to line it at a 90 degree angle otherwise it's gonna fall silly in it and where the because it's in two halves it's gonna form a line around it you'll see that but that can be again removed and polished up during finishing you just got a half a glue stick there to make a funnel where that's going to hit the molten metal is going to hit the ring there at the back so you're just going to make the impression of that into the top of the funnel again there's probably a tool which people use for this but this one he's found is the perfect shape to put that impression into the sand He's going to turn that top over again. You can tell that's the top because you can see the pegs there. And line that up so it doesn't have any gaps all the way around. So again with the ring there, it's best to put it at the top so less pewter is used. But again, what doesn't get used can always be remelted for other pieces. So he's just cut a little bit off that glue stick so it'll fit better into where the funnel is going to go. So he's, he's thinking that with the ring it might be better to make that funnel shape that he's using with the glue, with the glue stick. You can make that in the 3D printer software. So he knows for another time that he can do that. So he's going to put the sand in the top now and completely compact that down. He did make sure that there was no clumps in that sand and then use the wood again to compact, to compact that right down so there's no gaps in that flask. So another word for that glue stick that he's using instead to where the molten metal goes through is called a sprue I believe so yeah he can he can make that so it can go onto the 3d printed ring for another time so a few things to note instead of talc some people use cornstarch as well and he prefers to use to wear gloves with this when he's handling the sand because it's got a weird sensation to it he doesn't like the feeling of it sticking to his hands you might be familiar with this if you've worked with this type of material previously and in case anyone wondered how much pewter to use in a project there isn't really a specific amount to know but he said to me, he advises that you put more in that you think you need. A good guide is to watch a few videos on the subject. But it's always good to put a bit more in than you think you need. Because it can always be remounted. So, he's now made a funnel shape as you can see there. With Just with his thumb, nothing magical or anything like that. It's literally just with the thumb to make a funnel and then on the other side as well he's just pressing that in with his thumb and finger to make that funnel shape so you've got to make sure that's a clear journey for the molten metal to get to the ring and then you see there a right close up 
that's brilliant so if you've got any bits of sand there just brush that away from the ring and the channel so it doesn't get into where the molten metal is going to pour so again as the last so again like last time he's just going to make some vents for again exactly the same for the steam and the gas to escape from and then from the ring to each corner and down and it goes right through to the other side again brushing away any excess so it doesn't get into where the molten metal is going to be poured see right through and four in total so the only difference with this bit at this stage is he's not going to make a funnel into the back as before as it's going through the top of the flask instead So we're going to sit that top piece on the bottom there and make sure there's no gaps again. If there is gaps it's probably that sand has got into where the pins go so make sure not to do that that it doesn't go in there. So you'll notice this as an, he stood it up there like that but as an extra precaution he's got two pieces of wood there and he's going to place them at the front and back there where, the, where you can see the visible sand and he's going to place either side of that clamps now you don't have to do that but this is a what do you say a belt and braces approach if you will and it's just to make sure because you're working with hot metal it's to prevent it coming apart if you can imagine molten metal just coming out of that it's not brilliant so this is just an extra precaution he, do he does and I don't think there's anything wrong with that you don't have to do it but he finds it works best for him it's never happened but you never know if it is going to happen So we can see a close up here of the pewter melting, he's used two fresh pieces of pewter there so we're able to see it melting close up and then you can see as well bottom left hand corner so you can see what's happening and we've put it in real time and you can start to see it's starting to drip there so again as an extra to speed it up a bit he's using that butane handheld blowtorch
So you can see a dark grey film there and that needs to be removed because it's impurities, if you will. So it needs to be took out of there. He uses the back of the spoon there to get rid of that and you'll see the difference in the colour once that's removed. And just one smooth pour there into the top of the flask. Again we were hoping for, oh there's a bit of steam, but we were hoping for some to come out the vents but it didn't so. There we go, that's gone right down there and you can see that's starting to solidify there. Again we've got a bit of a dent in the top so we're trying to figure out what causes that and we're not sure so there's like a little hole there. But as soon as that's cooled down we can get it out the flask and show you what this ring looks like. And you'll see the funnel shape which can be removed during when you're finishing it. There we go, so that's the top come off and that's the ring there you can see. The precious. <laughs> and he's just going to brush away the dark bits there where the sand has, sorry the molten metal has touched the sand and burnt it. So that's got to be removed there. A little bit of molten metal has gone down those vents. Again, that can be removed during finishing. As with any piece of jewellery, I guess. Just going to carefully remove that. So you can see it. And you can see the sand is built up and that needs to be removed as well. Probably got rid of because it's got burnt. So away that goes. So you can see the seam around the edge of that, that can be removed during your finishing and things like that. As with any piece of jewellery, that's where it marries up with the two sides of the flask. So that can be sorted out and it can be polished up and, and it'll look absolutely fine. Now this is another method we thought we'd include which is, that's the brand there, I won't even begin to try and pronounce but it's a silly gum compound. Apologies we've not got any of that left from the pack because it's all been used but we'll do that in another video if anyone's interested. So he's poured that molten metal into the mould which is ready made. Sometime in the future we'll have a video on that, he's just going to remove that mould there and he's made a pendant there that's a viking rune so heathen emporium thank you very much for showing us your crafting and here is a show reel of some finished pieces he's done i'll provide a link in the description below to where you can buy them and have a look at them and admire them on instagram and everywhere like that Thank you Heaven Emporium for being part of the Nitty Kitties uh, committee <laughs> and I shall see you next time with another video we don't know what yet because we like all kinds of crafting. See you again soon and thank you for watching, bye for now.
Thank you.